Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Health Theory. I am here with Dr. Joel Gould. Thank you so much for joining me, man. I have had so much fun researching you. Uh, it, it has been a wild ride, I think, to say the least. So if you don't mind, um, give people a little bit of background. Your story is is pretty interesting. Sure. Well, um, I'm a dentist by by profession. I'm Canadian. And um, I practiced in Canada for about 10 years in Vancouver before moving down to Los Angeles. And I've been here in Manhattan Beach for the last 20 years. My story is kind of interesting because I was sick for most of my life with an autoimmune disease called Crohn's, something that wasn't that common back in those days, but now is much more popular. It's, it's happening a lot around the world. And um, about five years ago, so I've been in my location in Manhattan Beach for about 20 years. About five years ago, I discovered by chance that I had sleep apnea. And I was surprised- What do you mean by because- chance? Well, I was at a conference and part of the conference, it was in Las Vegas, as they said, listen, there's 30 of you here. We're going to give five of you sleep studies to take to your hotel room and bring them back down in the morning. We'll review them. So out of the five dentists that were there learning about this whole new syndrome, um, they said, well, three of you have it. One of you has it pretty bad. And that was me. And so that was sort of my accident. Yeah. Well, I'm not obese now. I was heavier. Uh, I didn't snore. Give me a range. What are we talking about when you say heavy? Well, uh, I, I've stopped weighing myself at about 250 pounds and I'm 6'3". How tall are you? 6'3"? 250 6'3, pounds yeah. of 6'3 is not exactly obese. I was one of those bigger guys. You know, You know, it's one of those things where my whole life I was always trying to be fit. And I graduated from dental school at the age of 24 and I dedicated my life to follow the latest trends in fitness. And no matter what I did, I could not whip my body into shape. And I really tried everything. Um, well, so hold on. Are you still suffering from Crohn's at that point? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, was, I mean, that, I that is gnarly. In fact, I'm kind of surprised you were able to put on the weight. If you had Crohn's, isn't it usually that people have a harder time, like keeping the weight on just cause they, they're not able to hold anything in. I was yes. going to say down, so, so, but unfortunately down. that, that, that it, is, is the problem. It, unfortunately, yeah. 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 So, so it's very common um, for it to go in both directions. The issue is that when I was 14, I started taking prednisone. Hmm. So that changed the trajectory of my health. And I started putting on weight. I actually began to gain weight in the fifth grade or fourth grade. And um, it sort of goes along with my story. It's it's quite common to some of the stuff that happened to me. So um, a lot of people who have severe Crohn's disease will have a hard time keeping enough food in. Um, I didn't have that issue. It was for me, my Crohn's disease was, I, I never had to have surgery. So it was always That's just nice. mild enough. Yeah, I was only hospitalized once. And it was just managing my symptoms, you know, for anyone at the who- time. So I had a friend growing up. So this would have been in the nineties um, that was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And I remember that they were just like, you have to live with it. That's it. He um, had parts of his bowel uh, removed, which was just God awful. I mean, what he went through was so gnarly. Uh, I remember they put him on prednisone as well. And his face ballooned up. It was crazy. He was unrecognizable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he struggled with that for a long time. So yeah. was it just, you had a milder, case or were you doing something right that um, mitigated some of the symptoms? Not really. Um, I, you know, I took different medications. Every couple of years, I'd go back to whatever doctor I was seeing and see, was there any new medication? Um, what was the current therapy? And, um, you know, I, I, went, I cycled on and off all kinds of medications, but I always went back to prednisone and a, a medication called Flagyl, not really understanding that there was any other options. And Are then, those you know, both over steroids? Years, Prednisone's a steroid, what, right? Yeah, prednisone steroid, um, flagyl is an antibiotic. Okay. And it's actually very Oof. good against fungal infections. Is that making things yeah. worse or is that targeted to bad bacteria in the gut? Yeah, so it's very antifungal. So I found that when I went on this medication, um, and it's part of my, my Crohn's protocol now that I recommend, is that if you have active infection, you need an antibiotic because the, the actual colon itself gets infected. So the antibiotic mm. is really useful. And I would try and stay on it for two to four weeks. And it would destroy a lot of the fungus. And that's, again, part of the syndrome. Uh, and because this is really a syndrome of the gastrointestinal microbiome. That's what this is. So mm-hmm. Crohn's disease is basically like almost all auto, auto, autoimmune diseases, an inflammatory chronic disease that basically humans evolve to have certain sensory inputs in their body. And when we don't get them, we break down. And everyone breaks down differently along the lines of their own genetic predisposition. So I'm used I want to give people a, a quick spoiler alert before you go too deep into that and say, look, sure. uh, if you're thinking this is another um, gut episode, which by the way, I would love doing because I can't have enough gut episodes on here, but he really has a different take. So uh, you're going to want to stay tuned and hear this. When I was researching you, there were 
multiple times that I stop to text people and I'm like, yo, I think this is, this is going to be the solution to your problem. You have to like, check this guy out. So, yeah. um, I, I want to get back to the story, but I just want to make sure that people know, cause I've, I brought a lot of gut people on. My wife right. has struggled profoundly with gut right. issues. Um, right. I almost certainly now hearing your story, partly because of what your punchline is, which I will let you get to, but, um, it's, it is really interesting. Like this is so complicated and you're introducing yet another um, layer to this, which yeah. until you, my friend, I had not heard anybody talking um, about this. So uh, nope. just by way of sort of wrapping that up, so it's not just a big tease. Um, <laughs> what, sure. what What is that, the, the, the quick punchline, and then obviously we'll go into way detail on it. Sure. So the punchline is without an evolutionary vitamin D level, you will not be able to maintain a healthy gut microbiome. No matter how many probiotics you take, even if you get a fecal transplant, you're not gonna be able to maintain that healthy gut microbiome. And this is because this was always an evolutionary advantage to us to change. The gut microbiome is an adaptable seasonal organ, and when your vitamin D level is low, your body thinks it's winter, and the different types of bacterial species will shift and they will send different signals to the brain. So in wintertime, you should be getting a signal via the gut-brain axis that to eat sugar and carbohydrates. This is an evolutionary advantage to our ancestors. Today, it's bad news. Now, wouldn't that be the very thing that would be hard to get though in the winter? Why would the, you would think that the microbiome would switch to that when like fruit was plentiful. Um, yeah. Why would that be? That, that feels like it should be a lead up to winter versus a winter thing. In, in theory, it should be. So the issue is that you have to understand that, you know, humans evolved like outdoors without clothing, hats or sunscreen. And, and our natural state is to have a higher vitamin D level. So, um, you know, the, some of the thought process is that towards the end of the season, as fruit is, you know, ripe and you want to put on as much weight as you can, um, there's some, it just sort of depends on, what you're looking at, I think that the issue is that over the evolutionary span of like ice ages and, and different climate conditions, that this microbiome was one of where there was, you couldn't find game and maybe you had to dig up tubers or so, you know, sending that signal um, when the gut microbiome shifts is, you know, technically an evolutionary advantage if you're hungry all the time. Um, I think it's really, you know, I don't know that our ancestors would have had levels below 20 not nanograms per milliliter. I don't just don't know that that would ever have been the case. So. Yeah. So one thing that I found as I embarked on my own health journey, and again, like I was saying before, um, a lot of this kicked off for me because I, I legitimately got to the point where I was worried my wife was going to die. Um, she had um, just, she, she, she couldn't hold on to nutrients. I mean, it was crazy. Her hair was falling out. Her nails were breaking. She was in pain all the time. We had tried everything. She had swallowed cameras, colonoscopy, endoscopy, um, FODMAP diet, like everything. It was just, it was crazy. And it was getting to the point where you start to feel helpless. And so we got... We had been working with a bunch of different doctors. We finally found one doctor who was going to do... Um, uh, an immunoglobulin transfusion. And uh, we were, I think it was the day before she was scheduled to have her first transfusion. And I was like, there's something wrong. Just stop. I, I'm going to embrace that. I have to learn this now. And so I started just immersing myself in the microbiome, which I didn't probably six months before that. I'd never even heard of the microbiome. And it was only because of what we were doing at Quest, which um, you actually ended up being involved in, which I didn't even realize until today. Right. Um, so very, very interesting. So we start looking at the microbiome and then six months later, my wife ends up just getting slaughtered by this. And so I was like, okay, I, I have to start going into this researching, become my own expert. And as you begin to really peel back the layers and try to figure out what is causing the problem, you hit confusion after confusion. And it seems like you are one of a few voices talking about the gut full stop. And then certainly one of the you're the only person I have heard talk about the gut and vitamin D. Um, why is that? Well, so the first thing you have to understand is that we have two basic groups. We have traditional medicine, allopathic doctors, and then we have the alternative medical world, which is highly variable. There's some guys who are really great and some people who want to make you put an ear candle. So there's a, a real variety. Okay. Yeah. So all this really goes back to what happened to our medical system. And it goes way back to another crazy Canadian dentist, 
by the name of Weston Price. Now, Price's information was mind blowing that at that time, um, I, you know, I don't what time know is that? The 1920s, 1930s, 1930s. Yeah. So the, the, the current situation was the medical paradigm was eugenics and everyone was interested in bloodlines and it was very racist. And this is what Adolf Hitler was actually interested in this whole eugenics movement. And at that time, this dentist, first of all, who not, you know, not a real doctor is saying, Hey guys, you know, they're saying, well, we think that the, the jaws are being destroyed and there's decay and gum disease because of a mixing of the races. And he says, hey, you know, I think it's the environment. I think it's the diet and what these people are doing. And at that time, this guy must have just been, you know, tossed aside. And this information is literally at the heart of this pandemic. The lack of understanding of what he said and his information, it's really been obfuscated continually over the last 80 years and it's still being hidden. Because ultimately, when I say vitamin D is at the root cause of this, everyone thinks, oh, I'm good. I drink milk. I'm fine. I take a multivitamin. It's in there. In fact, the RDA is in there, so I should be fine. So the lack Walk of me through. So back in sure. back in the 1930s, Weston Price does what? Begins traveling he, around. He's looking yeah. at different peoples. What what is he finding? So his his major major concern was in his patients. This was in in Minneapolis. He had a dental practice, and in those days, people had their teeth pulled and had full dentures. So he was seeing a total whoa, whoa, collapse. Whoa, whoa. Time out. Time out. People were intentionally just yanking their teeth out. They had to because there was profound decay and gum disease. So you're young enough. I'm old enough to remember a time where it was very normal. You hit your 40s and you had your teeth taken out and dentures what? put in. This is real. What? When I graduated from dental school, I, I was the only person who was doing full mouth extractions and immediate dentures because I was in a rural area. But this is the tail end of that whole generation and people's mouths were falling apart. So no, this I have a cool. vague memory of um, something I came across, correct me if I'm wrong, that in World War II, uh, oral health was considered like a national crisis because they were having trouble with soldiers. Yes. Uh, that was one of those sort of passing remarks that apparently stuck in my head, but uh, that's insane. I had no idea that people were just yanking their teeth out. Yeah, yeah the, the, the whole, so basically with a breakdown of the whole jaw and the airway, he was seeing crowding, no room for all 32 teeth. And so he said, I want to go to places where people have great teeth and find out what are they doing. So he literally traveled around the world. And in those days, this is at a time before antibiotics had even been discovered. So he traveled around the, the globe. He went to 14 countries and five continents, and he went to visit all of the um, communities of Aboriginal people that were still just coming into contact with Western civilization. And interestingly enough, he photographed everything because he knew something very important was happening. And in his time, they were looking for twins to experiment on in Nazi Germany because they were believing in this eugenic stuff. So they were, mm -hmm. you know, torturing these twins. So he was looking for twins. And what he found were twins where one was following an ancestral diet and still living that lifestyle. And one where the other twin was eating a Western diet of refined carbohydrates and sugar and industrial seed oils. And so Weston Price had a very simple message. He said that there, this is what's going on. This is the root cause of a lack of room for all 32 teeth. This is the root cause of the decay and gum disease that he was seeing. And Do you know how he put that together? Like pure uh, observation. When, so did he, when was vitamin D discovered? So the, we're talking now. We're going to go back to the Industrial Revolution, okay? Um, because um, rickets. Everyone's heard of rickets. It's a disease where your bones go soft. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the Industrial Revolution in in London, in Glasgow. Um, that was where they found that children were having deformed bones. And we're talking about the seventeen, you know, the the Industrial Revolution, seventeen hundreds. So it was noticed that children who lived out in the country were much healthier, and they literally found vitamin D two. And they, you know, they, they basically, which is plant vitamin D, but still works on humans. So this was known. So as we, you know, gone to those times, you need to think about tuberculosis. And it's a very interesting disease because tuberculosis is a bacterial infection of the skin or lungs. And this killed millions of people in those early 1900s. And the cure for tuberculosis was to go to a sanatorium where you would lie in a hospital bed in the sun. So they figured out that yeah, sunlight alone would, would cure this bacterial disease. And at that time, in those 1920s, Schlitz beer was the sunshine beer. You can Google this to see an image of, in 1920, you'll see what? this can from 1920s and it says Schlitz, the sunshine beer. And Why, because it had vitamin D in it? They added vitamin D to it. So this is already, 
This is the third who, time who, coming was around. Was it Florence Nightingale that um, realized, I think during World War I, that if you put a soldier in the sun, their wounds healed more quickly? Man, that's that's so interesting. Like, it feels like vitamin D would be one of those soft things where it's like, do I notice something? Do I not notice something? But for them to recognize those patterns, that that's really, really interesting. Okay. So this is, uh, we're, we're back in the industrial revolution. We begin yep. to realize there's something happening because we're blotting out the sun, which is, yep. I think hard for us to imagine today. And you, you get a bit of this in say Beijing, where it's like, you're really diminishing the sun's ability to reach people. Um, but I, it, it's certainly hard for me to imagine. Cause I look out, look, I'm in LA. I look out, I see smog, but I can also right. lay out and get a tan. So I, I've always sort of thought of the industrial revolution as being a bit like that, <laughs> but I'm getting the feeling of people were getting rickets that uh, it was yeah. significantly worse. Yeah. Um, so we begin to put it together. Did, did somebody actually draw blood and go, hey, there's this thing, vitamin D. So were we guessing at vitamin D the way that we sort of guess at particles? Yes. Yes. Okay. We were guessing so, um, cod liver oil. So Weston Price noticed there was two chemical substances that every single Aboriginal community around the world had, and they would give this to their young people for fertility. And it was it was something that turned out to be vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. The K2 is something called Activator X. How are they which, isolating it? Um, just by, ob this is, this is all by observation. But I'm saying we, like, you're, you're a native tribe. How the hell are you isolating um, D3 and K2 like that. Well, that seems crazy. Was it in a plant? Is it in a fish? What like what animal, animal foods, animal foods. And so, they would, but, but they're doing some process to, to distill it. So the, it was basically cod liver oil that they were, that, that, that was a substance. That How the fuck do humans figure this shit out? This is like, Oh, by the way, if you cut a blowfish this way, you die. And if you cut it this way, it's delicious. It's like it's trial and error. What? How many, this is crazy. So yeah. do we have any information on how they figured that out? Or that's just sort of lost to the ages. Well, so really the, the coolest part about Weston Price is this is really the time pre-modern science. And so he's noticing this just by observation alone, no lab studies, the vitamin D hormone was not discovered until much later, until Michael Hollick, who is like the granddaddy of, of all vitamin D, who's still active in the scene, he isolated this and said, hey, this is a molecule. And that's when we finally knew what it was. We knew that sunlight was instrumental for health because, you know, throughout all of history, um, you know, this was known, um, the, the different, you know, the, the Greeks knew that sunlight was very useful for both mental and um, Hippocrates believed in heliotherapy, you know, and they named it after the, the god of sun, Helios. And he used to prescribe heliotherapy for both physical and mental health. So we have to understand that when we were tribal people, and this is, you know, a long time ago, the wisdom of the tribe was gained over many thousands of years through trial and error. And it's so interesting that they would give these two ceremonial foods to, for fertility. And they are literally vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. And just by observation, those two things, the D3, K2, is still at the core of what's plaguing the world right now, which I find kind of fascinating and sad and mind-blowing. We're all in lockdown because this information was, sub was subverted 80 years ago by the powers that be, the John Kellogg, the Rockefellers, the powers that be that produce cereal and you know that type of stuff. Why, they, Why would they give a shit? Well, I don't know how well you've looked into some of that stuff, but they want. I mean, I know a bit about Kellogg and his like um, he didn't want guys masturbating or whatever. That's great. Yep. Uh, but That's uh, great. other than that, I don't know a lot. So, okay, but so, what D three just what gives you what you need to make the sex hormones, which then makes you feel randy. Like what? Well, what is so, the thinking? So his his issue was that he didn't want people eating meat. He and some other Why? people are at the heart of the vegan movement because it made you horny. Made you. It made okay. you. Is, is there something real to that? Sure, because nutritionally, meat's very healthy for you, and a vegan vegetarian diet technically is not. If I'm offending anyone, I'm sorry. But eating the the whole foods that we evolved on is what makes us our best version of ourselves. When you start, you know, this is back in the 1920s and 30s that John Kellogg is packaging the cereal, and you know, he's got he's got his um uh you know uh competition, and they're just packaging sugar, and that's what this is. So this industry. They were not interested in any natural natural therapies. The food industry and the pharmaceutical industry is the petrochemical industry. This is a message that they don't want to get out there. The question is, who really knows how powerful vitamin D is? And I can answer that. Big Pharma knows. 
They've tried apparently over 85 times to do a vitamin D analog. No one is interested in investigating these natural substances because they cannot be patented. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't be focused on them. And that's really what it is. Vitamin D got shoved to the side, as did heliotherapy, as did Tesla's information, as did everything. The petrochemical industry basically said, no, we don't want any of this stuff. This is all gone. And now we even Really fast, why do you call big pharma petrochemicals? Well, if you look into the origin of who this is, right now we have Monsanto, which was a poison company purchased by Bayer, okay, which is a pharmaceutical company. So now we have the company that created poisons now has gone into food and the food chain and controlling the world's food. Um, and they, they've created this particular poison that's in everything now. And the company Bayer- Called what? Is what? Are you talking about glyphosate? glyphosate? Glyphosate, yeah. I don't know. People maybe don't don't either want to know. I didn't care about glyphosate. I never wanted to be a, an environmental crusader. But what do you mean but people don't a, want to know about glyphosate? Well, you know, I think people hear that, oh, there's pesticides on your food. They don't really know just how profoundly this one thing is affecting not just Canada and America, but the world. This is a poison that was basically discovered. This is a toxic chemical. And this company, Monsanto, they changed into an agro company. And now they've been bought by by Bayer, but the the petrochemical industry is the pharmaceutical industry. That's they're they're one. If you start to go back, the medications are pharmaceutical. They're, they're oil based. So these are all unnatural chemical medications that really go back to that time. I was okay. surprised to be thinking in those terms. But you know things have changed much over the years, and you know uh, what may have been a cohesive conspiracy back in the 1920s by a lot of those groups has now just, you know, changed into who's making money. All right. And so let's, let's go. There's a lot of points in here and I want to, I want to get to them because they're, they're all really interesting. And it's part of what makes your message, um, so internally coherent. Okay. So, um, you've got in the beginning, you've got these guys that I, I'm going to, um, paint it with an emotional brush, but I want you to stop me because I actually don't know virtually okay. anything about this. So okay. if I end up being um, unrealistically generous or whatever, let me know. I tend yeah. to be, um, I'm whatever the antithesis of conspiratorial is, that's me. I, I can look dead in the eye of a conspiracy and it just doesn't feel like a conspiracy to me. It just feels like people being stupid or greedy. Um, but if this is like, there's something more sinister going on. Let me know. So you've got this re super religious guy um, who doesn't want guys masturbating or eating meat because it yep. is somehow, I'm sure, against God. So yeah. he's got his reasons for wanting you to eat graham crackers. Um, yep. So he's going down that path, which I will grant him. He may like it may have come from a beautiful place. Like I want to save everybody. Um, yep. And then you've got the. Who was the other person that you said is coming into this and they wanted you to not know what vitamin D you Rockefeller or somebody else you mentioned? Well, so, so this this all goes to like it's strange because this is what's coming out right now with this conspiracy theory stuff is that there are power, apparently powerful families who made their money in oil who wanted just to control. And of course, they wanted to make money because ultimately people do things for money. But the powers that be at that time. They wanted to control the narrative. And the narrative was one of narrative racism. around food or vitamin D uh, around health. So you're saying this is a battle between epigenetics and genetics. Yeah, that's correct. Interesting. So you've got the psychopathy of people going down the eugenics route. Uh, they think that at least as it intersects with teeth and diet, they think this is an issue of mixing um, genetics. And you've got our boy Weston Price going around the world saying, no, this is an epigenetic phenomenon. I don't know if we had that word back then or not, that, yeah. but he's saying, no, 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 this is an interaction of genes and the environment. And we're modernity is moving us so far in one direction. Did he have his finger on the sun or he just knew these two things that people are isolating have something to do with it? Yeah. So uh, th that's a good question. Um, I've never heard him discuss actual sun exposure, but his focus was it was so fascinating. It was vitamin D3, vitamin K2, those two substances. And he said and he was not... saying what they fix your jaw, they fix your teeth. Or did he know there was something way bigger going on? Because ultimately, so, we're going to bring this all back around to the gut yep, and yep. all kinds of crazy shit. Yep. You you I once heard you call um, sun. But you may have said vitamin D and K2 are the panacea. But you either said that or you said sun exposure is a panacea. And I like panaceas. That would be amazing. I want yeah. this to be that effective. Um, but first, let's let's continue down that path real fast. Sure. 
So this is what Weston, this was his message. And, and so I want people to understand. So I'm a Canadian dentist. And just to give you a history. So when I found out who Weston Price was, I only found out five years ago. I've been a dentist now for 30 years. Weston Price is not taught in Canadian dental school or American dental school. When I found out who he was and I ordered his book online, and this is a book with photographs showing teeth and the jaws, I was alarmed that my country, Canada, and the dental school system would not have brought this gentleman forward. And he had some very simple rules. He said, these are the two substances that you should have in abundance, and they come from whole foods. They come from organ meats. Um, and this other food comes from raw dairy. And this is basically a, a green a cows that eat green grass. They produce a high level of vitamin K2. And he said, do not eat industrial seed oils. Do not eat processed carbohydrates and sugar. And, and he didn't have any studies. He's just saying, look, man, I traveled around the world. I'm yeah. telling you, if you want your, and I'm assuming he was focused on teeth. Yep. If you want- He was focused on general health because it wasn't just, he, what he did was- Did he have other metrics? Like when he's taking the photos, are they primarily of jaws and teeth or are they of all kinds of things, skin quality or whatever? A little bit of both. And you'll see, you know, anyone who wants to look it up is kind of mind blowing because I tell this to high level medical doctors and dentists and they're like, oh, whatever. I say, just read the first 30 pages. And he goes into the detail and he said, this is just by, this is only by observation. There were no tests, but that's, and you know, he's been trashed since then saying, well, he doesn't have proper research. This recognition of these conditions is really profound. And here we are more than 80 years later. What is every oil when you eat anything that's fried? These are industrial seed oils to this day. Every processed food that you are eating, unless you know where the food chain came from, has these toxic chemicals. He now, is this a glyphosate problem or is there something the inherent? Okay, yeah. so that, oh, whoa, whoa, did you just say deuterium? Deuterium, yeah. So, this so is now, now we're really getting into some some complicated shit. So um, talk. what is deuterium? Okay. Talk to me. Is, there's something about water in all of this, yeah. if I'm so, not mistaken. So I learned about deuterium at Quest Nutrition. I was going to say, we we had talked about this back at Quest. I honestly, it was so complicated. Uh, yeah. I was, I, I don't okay, remember well, it well. So, so I'll bring it back just for a second to Weston Price. So Weston Price published all these pictures, which was very unusual. Medical text did not have photographs. And he is quoted as saying, I have the use of photographs very liberally in my book. It said that a photograph is worth a thousand words of text. And that's in the 1930s. So when I found this out, I was like, well, I want to finish what this guy started. This message is so simple. What he found changed my life. And what his, he found the root cause of modern chronic illness. And I said, I want to bring- Can you give me the root cause of modern illness in a single sentence? Deuterium and glyphosate overdose. That's it. So those, so, those are the two, those are our villains. And so the reason, what I did, I created cartoon characters. So even more than vitamin D, I actually thought I was setting you up to say something about vitamin D, uh, but I yeah. want the truth, whatever that may be. Well, so, so deuterium so and glyphosate. Yeah. Deuterium glyphosate. So deuterium is what makes sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and even fruit bad for you. So to make this really simple, I created cartoon characters where you can see. So hydrogen is the simplest element. It has one electron and one proton. Hydrogen has three isotopes. One of them that's natural is deuterium. Deuterium is a natural substance found everywhere on this planet. It's found in water. It's found in food. It's even found in the air. This is a normal part of nature. When we process foods like sugar or grains, grains are loaded with deuterium and no animals on this planet or humans on the planet did not evolve to eat those foods. So that's why, um, you know, grain, corn and soy, these foods are not healthy to us primarily because they are loaded with deuterium. They're not the natural naturally. foods that humans, yeah, naturally. Okay. So it's but not we, like we GMO'd them to have more deuterium or anything like that. It's not from acid rain. It's no, just we did. naturally. Did you, over the years, we did GMO them. We to, to, make them to include more deuterium. Yes. By okay. I would assume by accident. Way. It's just we were optimizing for something else, and Absolutely. it happened to. Do, don't you want the biggest, fastest growing, sweetest fruit? Okay. So that seems like it makes sense, but this is a mistake because we didn't know that this subatomic particle, I call deuterium father time because this is technically what ages us. The, the amount of deuterium that builds up in your body over time is technically what aging is. And so these are because hard- Because it's free radical? Help me understand that. No, it's not. So um, you've heard of carbon dating. Um, so yes. carbon has a molecular weight of 12. Carbon 14 is an isotope of carbon. Now an isotope differs 
only by the number of uh, of um, neutrons. Okay, so there's only three subatomic particles: electrons, protons, and neutrons. So when you add extra neutrons, you create an isotope. Okay, and if you add enough neutrons, that becomes radioactive. So those neutrons are very powerful. Now, carbon-12 to carbon-14 is not much of a difference in molecular weight. Hydrogen, when you add one neutron, you double the weight. And that one thing becomes profound because we utilize hydrogen as fuel in our bodies because of its chemical structure. Hydrogen has a molecular weight of one. It's one electron, which is almost weightless, and one proton, which carries all the weight. So this hydrogen is tossed around everywhere in your body, in your mitochondria, through the electron transport chain. And we have this system where we produce energy in our mitochondria. Um, and when we get too much deuterium coming into the mitochondria, it actually breaks the mitochondria's ability to produce energy. And that breakage is related to the production of cancer. So this deuterium was normal. So we do get a certain amount of deuterium that comes into our bodies, but through farming and through the advancement of what we thought was progress, we increase this food, this not natural, this finely chopped up sugar and flour that overwhelms our body. Then we're eating, you know, all day long, snacking throughout the day. So we're constantly attacking our mitochondria with this deuterium. So prior to processed foods, you would not ever get a deuterium overload because the deuterium in the environment that you're in is tied to the sunlight which starts to get complex, but um, that's why I have cartoon characters. So basically prior to processed foods, you could not overdose on deuterium because it just wasn't in the environment. We needed to bring these new modern foods that started 12,000 years ago um, forward. You know, same reason why the Egyptians were unhealthy. They ate a lot of grain. So this extra neutron- How do we know they were unhealthy? You're, I've never heard that before. Oh, really? Yeah. So you, you can um, do some research on it. Um, a lot of the kings, a lot of the Egyptian kings had, you know, all kinds of issues. They were eating basically grains. They were eating the foods that we came up with that were never our food. So where deuterium comes into play is that this gets into why grass fed is healthy. Grass fed, grass finished. Anything that's that eats grass is low in deuterium because grass itself is low in deuterium. And that's the food that humans evolved to eat. So we evolved to eat ruminants. We we evolved to eat things that ate grass. Correct. Correct. Got it. So feeding cows and any livestock, grain or soy is bad. It's bad news because those animals start to incorporate much more deuterium into their body. And so anything that has a high level of deuterium technically ages you. It's very hard on your body. So that extra neutron starts to weigh everything down. And you know we get into a little more sciencey uh, discussions, but every every part of your body has hydrogen attached. We use a lot of hydrogen. Hydrogen can be replaced by deuterium. It's natural. So water even comes in three varieties: H two O, H D O, and D two O. D two O is heavy water. What? Heard of it? Yeah. This is this is this is. I, I learned this at Quest Nutrition. Just so you know. That's so interesting. Um... Okay, this is crazy. So that's deuterium. Yeah. Uh, we have just for anybody that's sticking with us, man. Rock, rock through <laughs> this. The, it, it, it. Um, I think it's important, and we'll we'll simplify it again by the end. Uh, I've heard you give very simple instructions before, and so, yeah. um, I'll, I'll make sure to take us there. But, um, so if if our two villains are deuterium and glyphosate, let's just put a period on deuterium really fast. So yep. um, in in making things uh, grow bigger, plumper, juicier, sugarier, yummier, um, we yep. are unintentionally adding deuterium to it. So if you think about um, if you crossbreed wolves for temperament, you get a cocker spaniel. Um, so to give people an idea, there's there's always these things that go along with it. It's actually really interesting. Like if you look at the way animals are bred and how you can predict certain features pure by breeding for temperament, um, yeah. certain other things will change. So I can totally get how we end up um, adding something, whether it's deuterium or anything, how we end up sort of unintentionally adding something because we're aiming at something else. Um, okay, so... And, and the industrial, the, sorry, the industrial seed oils, they took these oils that were the waste product of farming and they hydrogenate them, but they put in more deuterium. So that's why industrial... Is that what hydrogenation is? Is uh, yeah, adding adding hydrogen, but there's they don't they don't add pure hydrogen. They they're adding a lot of deuterium. So being unaware of this, this is not known material, and this takes us back to um, why is omega six oils bad for you? Okay, because they're higher in deuterium. So is it bad or is it out of balance with omega three? Is problematic. 
Well, so why are we getting all those omega-6s? They're coming from these processed seed oils. And what makes those? So the, the problem is that the more omega-6 we get, the more our cell membranes are made up of this unhealthy stuff that has all these extra deuterium. Can you uh, name, what are some common seed oils? Because I think people are eating seed oils left, right, and center. They just don't know they're called seed yep. oils. Canola oil, corn oil, peanut oil, um, anything other than uh, coconut oil, avocado oil, and olive oil. Those are the oils that are low in deuterium. And this gets back to why is it, so grass-fed um, animals, why is a ketogenic diet healthy? And it goes back to deuterium and glyphosate. Why do people have a profound improvement of their health when they give up processed carbohydrates and go to a more uh, go to a more high fat diet? And that is at the core of what type of fat. It has to be a natural grass-fed organic fat or else it's loaded in deuterium. And this is at the core. Again, every processed food that you buy is loaded with this, with deuterium and glyphosate and these toxic seed oils. And this was a problem that started way back, you know, in the 1920s. And again, observable to, to somebody who was really into, you know, it, it sort of, when you think about what dentistry is, what we do is I'm, I've been in my location for 20 years. I see patients every six months lying down with this light shining in their mouth and I have time to spend with them. I know their families. I'm now a primary healthcare physician to these people because when they go to their clinic, it's a different doctor. They wait in line. They get a prescription. I know these people. I see all their different generations. So I have different powers of observation based on what I do. You know, dentists have a very unusual job. You know, I also have the experience of what I went through personally to be able to put these pieces together because when I started to get sick and the, the sleep apnea it came out of left field, but I was having other issues. I was having anxiety and depression. And I was grinding my teeth day and night. And bruxism is a vitamin D deficiency. Clenching and grinding where's, is- Where's the collision? So do we have three villains? So we've got deuterium, we've got yep. glyphosate, which we still have to get to. And then we have um, deficient vitamin D. vitamin D. Well, so when we add in glyphosate and so deuterium, if you eat enough deuterium, your ability to make vitamin D in sunlight is decreased. You get something called deuterated cholesterol. So for people who don't know, vitamin D is made from cholesterol in our skin. And UVB radiation will transform a molecule of cholesterol, 7-dehydroxy cholesterol. But if there's a lot of deuterium in your body- It turns it into vitamin D. Cr well, just correct. to finish so that it, sentence. It, yeah, correct. It turns into vitamin D. But if there's a lot of deuterium in your body for eating a lot of processed foods- the sunlight itself will have a harder time breaking that one chemical bond because of deuterium's extra neutron. So, and technically that's what aging is. So back in the old days before glyphosate, and here's where it comes together with vitamin D. Glyphosate when you say that's what aging is, do you mean that's what aging of the skin is or that's what aging of every cell is? Every cell, every cell. Yeah, we're born at a certain parts per million in deuterium. And what happens is the deuterium will exchange for hydrogen. And this is a known reaction to physicists and chemists around the world. So when you Google deuterium, it's very, very common, but they're using this to gauge rates of reaction because- What, what about telomeres? How, how does this all add up? Because what I would have said prior to you making that statement is sure. aging is where your cells have divided too many times, your telomeres have frayed like a shoelace yep. and um, the cells can no longer divide intelligently. And you basically, um, all the things you think of as old age, the organs beginning to shut down, loss of muscle mass, skin sagging, yep. uh, on and on and on. That's because your cells are, or the telomeres have frayed and the cells are no longer- um, intelligently dividing. So telomeres, I don't believe they're a reliable marker because when your vitamin D level is low, you do not transcribe or produce the enzyme telomerase. Telomerase will repair your telomeres. And you can just do a simple Google search, type in PubMed telomeres and vitamin D, and you'll see several studies that show that when you have an evolutionary level of vitamin D, you will make more of this I, enzyme. I didn't make you define that the first time you said it, but now I'm going to have to. What do you mean sure. by uh, an evolution level? What do you call it? Evolutionary level? An evolutionary level, level yeah. Yeah, the, the level that a human would have as a hunter-gatherer living outdoors. And so which would is, be, what's the number? Um, In my opinion, it'd be the, on the low end, 30. On the high end, maybe, or the normal end, 50. But at the end of the summer, it can go up to 80, 90, even 100. The highest if, level of- If I wanted to live forever- Yep. What number would you tell me to strive for? I'd be in the 60 to 80 range. That, that don't 81. Stop it, Tom. No, 81 is too much. Lots of flexibility. Lots of flexibility. So is there, I know if you supplement, I know that you can cause problems. You can overdose. Um, you're never going to overdose by being in the sun, but right. I'm just curious, you know, most things have a, a point of diminishing returns. Yep. 
is there a level that is too high? So vitamin D, yeah, so yes, of course there's a level that's too high. Different genetic populations will have different levels. It also depends on your entire vitamin D exposure, your life. If you have been vitamin D deficient, you got a lot of catching up to, you. you'll use up more vitamin D. Vitamin D is a metabolic hormone. And you need to think of it this way, is that prior to um, modern electronics, in the old days, if you were more active, we would be active outside. You'd be either hunting or gathering or going outside. So the extra exercise and effort you put in and in, in using up more energy would be supplemented by getting more sunlight. Now, here we are staying out of the sun and you are in your basement with your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and you're on your, your treadmill and you're exercising, you're using up your vitamin D, but you're not replacing that energy. This is, you know, humans evolved. We're animals. We're highly evolved animals. And taking in those signals is what changes everything. So we literally utilize sunlight for so much more than vitamin D. It literally charges the water in our bodies in the same way that plants take in the energy of the sun for photosynthesis. All right. And so I need you to commit. Is is the third villain uh, vitamin D deficiency or does that not rank as high as deuterium and glyphosate? So vitamin D is the thing. Vitamin D deficiency causes aging. So if you want to stay healthy, you want to obtain a vitamin D level. So back in the old days, before processed food, you would get older and older. And as deuterium would build up in your skin, your ability to make vitamin D would re be reduced slowly over time. At a certain point, you would start to choke in your sleep, which is called sleep apnea. And then you would die a death of natural causes, which is dying in your sleep. Now we're seeing this happen. People are running out of vitamin D, not ever having enough, starting to have sleep apnea choking in their sleep. So people are dying of strokes and heart attacks. People are dying of chronic inflammatory diseases because sleep apnea, which is a lack of vitamin D, is causing all these issues. If you're not sleeping properly, you are not repairing and regenerating. Simple as that. So the lack the of vitamin issue, D though has multiple causes. You've got building up deuterium in your body and you've got lack of sun. Yeah, so when vitamin D controls the microbiome, that microbiome is providing the chemicals to get you into normal sleep. It's providing all kinds of different chemicals. When the D level goes down and you can't ever get it back up again, you are going to die, that's it. And you can even, you know, there's I have studies posted where um, you know, how this is linked to aging. So chronic inflammatory diseases, th there's lots of different, you know, there, there's what causes aging, there's the free radical theory, right? So over time, free radicals basically take their toll on your body and cause inflammation. Vitamin D runs the anti-inflammatory system, but this is the most profound thing. Vitamin D regulates your gut microbiome, which regulates sleep. If you're not sleeping, you're not repairing, and then you break down. And really that's at the heart of the syndrome. If that makes sense. So the villains are yeah, totally. vitamin D. Now, now, how does vitamin D deficiency relate to glyphosate? Glyphosate destroys the enzymes in your liver and in your body that activate vitamin D. And this is information probably being spoken for activate, one of the first Activate, times. what do you mean? I thought it was happening when the sun hits the skin and it breaks off a electron or something. Are you the, right I forget so, exactly what words you so, use. Yeah. So it breaks one chemical bond. Um, cholesterol is your body's starter molecule. Your body makes everything out of this building block. So when you take cholesterol- So you should I stop taking a statin? No, I'm yes. kidding. I don't fucking statin, don't worry. Like, you gotta be kidding me, okay. So what happens is that the vitamin D itself, that's called cholecalciferol. That's vitamin D that you take. And when you take that, it has to go to your liver. That's be, D3 you're saying? Yeah, so D3 itself is cholecalciferol. It has to be hydroxylated or it has to be activated. This happens primarily in your liver, although it can happen in other cells in your skin and your lungs. It probably the, doesn't matter, but I'm curious enough to ask, when you sure. say activated, what at a cellular level, what are we talking about? So to be, so when you, when you like, so if you, basically it becomes an active molecule so that it can do work in your body. What's so the difference though between an inactive molecule and an active molecule? So the, the amount that your doctor measures is the 25 OHD. So that is the activated form of vitamin D. So you take vitamin D, it's not active, has to go into your liver to be activated by a specific set of enzymes called the, the cytochrome P450 enzymes. And they put one hydroxyl group onto a position, the 25 position. In this, that's why they call it 25 hydroxy vitamin D. That's your body doing the first activation step. That's the storage form that circulates throughout your body. That's the level that your doctor measures. No one is measuring the actual actual vitamin D in your body. So in places where there's a lot of glyphosate, 
this stuff destroys these enzymes. And I, that's why I created cartoon characters of these enzymes. Because when I say enzyme, you know, you don't really have a good idea. But these are troops of enzymes. I drew them as robot submarines. They took, take two things and join them or, or pull them apart. To give you an idea, an enzyme is something, it's like the worker bee of your cell. So because glyphosate is such an aggressive poison, it actually kills the enzymes that activate vitamin D. So you could be outside, you could be taking a lot of vitamin D, but your body can't use it. And when you go to the doctor, your doctor goes, your vitamin D level is low. And if you're eating foods that are high in glyphosate, oatmeal, beans, things that people think are healthy, but are loaded with glyphosate, these are the people who will show up at my office and they have very low levels of vitamin D because they have, they may have the building block of it, but their body cannot activate it. And so that's why glyphosate and deuterium are such villains because they both decrease your body's ability to take in the energy of the sun. And vitamin D literally is the power of sunlight in our bodies. And that's what keeps us young, literally. Why? Because vitamin D regulates autophagy, vitamin D regulates the anti-inflammatory pathway, vitamin D regulates the transcription of all kinds of different chemicals that keep us healthy and young, and vitamin D regulates sleep. I think it's important to tell people, especially the ones that are watching right now, he's 85. So you can see how well, no, I'm just oh, yeah. messing with you. But uh, yeah, that is crazy. Thank you. That actually um, clicks a lot of things into place. So now, um, who, let's get into prescriptive so just, behavior. Just, just, so just on that on that note, so when we see countries like Brazil or India, and they're having this high reaction to to COVID, these people are have suppressed vitamin D levels because they are literally eating this stuff. Um, Brazil is loaded with glyphosate. The 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 industry there is massive. So people who are literally should have high vitamin D levels, they don't have those because this chemical is destroying their body's ability to activate it. And there's what's even worse is there's a second step where the vitamin D gets activated to the active form, the 125 point. Um, and that form is the active point that actually goes to your DNA to create different enzymes. So an inability to do that second activation is also caused by glyphosate. So these two things, this deuterium glyphosate, this is literally um, breaking down as these, just these two villains, um, you know, on their own, they're dangerous separately, but they combine because glyphosate will literally tear open the cell membranes and deuterium will be able to actually damage more. So that, that's wow. sort of, you know, yeah. So earlier you said that um, from a healthy diet perspective, we're better off um, eating meats. You didn't say exclusively, but versus a vegan yeah. diet. Yeah. What if glyphosate were out of the picture? Could we get everything that we needed from a vegan diet if it was, you know, um, organic and, you know, raised in the, or grown in the perfect way, uh, you're shaking your head. So what, what's missing from a so, vegan diet? Nutrient density. So if you're going to be on a vegan diet and you're not going to have any processed foods to be a healthy vegan, it's doable, but you have to supplement and supplement and supplement with these processed foods. Anytime you chop up a food, you're giving your body something it was never designed to have. We're used to chewing food and we don't have, we never have these processed little chopped up bits. Think about your colon and the absorption. This is a completely le different level of absorption when we have these unnatural foods. Even when you eat fruit, there's fiber in there. Now you're drinking juice, it's completely toxic. It has deuterium and glyphosate and it's completely unnatural. You don't get the slow absorption of the sugar from the fiber of the fruit. So I believe that you can probably survive as a vegan. I think it's too hard to know, no matter how healthy you eat, to be able to get rid of that glyphosate that no one's testing for. And that's why I think a lot of vegans get very sick is because they've been basically dosing themselves with this toxin at the same time as they are not having these nutrient dense, high fat, high protein foods that we evolved to eat. We only no, I, can, really... I can hear yeah. vegans in the comments screaming right now. This asshole. Here's another guy. Yeah. A, you're destroying the planet. Fuck you very much. And uh, I'm super healthy. I went, I switched to being vegan uh, from eating meat a year ago. I've never felt better in my life. Um, yeah. What do you say to that? I've heard people say like, hey, it, a lot of people get some good benefit in the beginning, but over time it becomes problematic um, yeah. or something else. What, what's your take on that? Well, my take, and this is where it comes down to that extra neutron. If you eat a vegan diet, it's higher in deuterium, period. Okay. All of those foods, they have a higher level of deuterium. Grass Just plants in general have a higher level of deuterium? Starches. They're starches. So what do you, how are you going to get the nutrition into your body? 
Our bodies were designed to eat meat. Now, you don't have to, you can eat seafood. You don't have to eat red meat and, and organs and that. But the idea that, uh, you know, vegan, it's, it's not a match for our body. You can do it, but you'd have to be supplementing everything. If you're and eating- what is it, what do you see in our body that makes you say that it's not a match? Because people will show images of like a wolf's teeth and be like, that's a carnivore. We don't have teeth like that, Mr. Dentist. Nobody yep. should know better than yep. you. Yep. Look at us. We were meant to just grind up some grass. Nope. Here's what we have. We have our brain. When we figured out we could trick an animal to running off a cliff and then go and get it, that's the origins of hunting. You know, you probably heard that we used to go and, and after the carcasses were left, we'd go and snap the bones open and we would get the, the marrow. And that's what was the first profound change to get us away from being herbivores. So we never needed those teeth. We have our brains. Our brains are much sharper than any animal's teeth because we can use thought That's processes. Nice. And reason. That's good. I like that. Yeah. And to any vegetarian or vegan who doesn't like this, this is what I say. I'm 53 years old and I was sick for most of my life. I watched my parents and what they did. I watched what they ate. I watched the medications they took and I saw how they died. And you can fool yourself and you can you can be you know doing this and thinking it's great and you can even feel good. But you can't fool Mother Nature or your body. If you take in, they both died of pancreatic cancer. Correct. Pancreatic so what cancer. what is the connection between cancer and our our three villains? So deuterium and glyphosate destroy the mitochondria, and that's why I have Marty mitochondria. This is where everything you know. I, you know, people can think of think of your body as a computer. Okay, so you have your your brain is a CPU, and the different parts of your brain are the software programs. And your brain will send down signals through your nerves, all right? It doesn't matter how healthy your body is. If that signal coming out of your brain isn't strong enough, your body's going to work properly. Imagine that you, you, you build this beautiful house with all this Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all the great stereo surround system, and you plug it into the power grid, and the power that's coming in is, is weak and, and, and wobbly, and none of your appliances work right. So you keep on calling out the repairman to fix these things. But ultimately, they're not working because the amount of power coming in isn't what these things were designed to have. So all of life is centered around the production of energy second by second. Your mitochondria is the most important part of your body. This is literally your metabolism. This controls everything, including aging. Mitochondria controls apoptosis program cell death. Your mitochondria, because it's the power source. And so what happens is that when these mitochondria start to produce less energy, everything in your body starts to suffer. And what we're looking at in all allopathic medicine is doctors are looking at all these breaking down body parts. They're not understanding the core of how we actually work. They need to understand that, number one, your mitochondria is the most important thing. Number two, your gut microbiome is regulating and interacting with your brain and all the rest of your body. Not understanding this is a profound problem with our current medical paradigm. And the idea that vitamin D deficiency is really at the core of this is just going to go over people's heads because it doesn't seem like it could be important. And the reason that I'm such a big proponent of this vitamin D is that people don't understand that I lived as a sick person my whole life. And when I raised my vitamin D level from a level below 20 to 80, every single thing that was wrong with me melted away. And, you know, people say, well, you're, you're crazy. You think vitamin D deficiency causes everything. And no, not everything, but an awful lot because of what it controls. It controls the gut microbiome and it controls your sleep. How does it control the gut microbiome? Same way it's supposed to control all the barriers of your body. You produce antimicrobial proteins. And this is your body's main defense against any pathogen, whether it's COVID-19 or a bacterial lung infection. That's why people who went to lie in the sun who had tuberculosis got better. They raised their vitamin D level, their gut microbiome came back, and their body was able to produce all of these chemicals, both in the barrier cells and through the gut microbiome. Your gut microbiome is making all of these different chemicals. 90% of your serotonin is made in your gut microbiome. So this is something that we relied on forever. And not understanding that our microbiome is being destroyed, it's being destroyed by glyphosate is an antibiotic. It kills the diversity of the gut microbiome. It kills the diversity of your lung microbiome, your skin, everything, you name it. This is you know, a very toxic chemical.
Now, I have a feeling that um, in there was the answer that now I'm going to ask for, but I want to recontextualize <laughs> it because you, you started to um, say something and I, I interrupted you. Uh, you said, when um, vegans come to me and they have a problem with what I'm saying, I tell them this, I watched how my parents died and then sure. I went in on the parents and then we sort of decontextualize sure. it from the vegan thing. So I just want to bring it back. The decisions that you make every day of your life, the choices that you make all start to add up over time. If you're 24 and you're a vegan and you're happy and healthy, that's great. But I've been a clinician for 30 years and I've only ever been in two real different locations. I was 10 years in Canada and then 20 years in this location. I see people age. I have patients who get sick, get cancer and die. So I see this process of aging. So just because you're doing something when you're 24, 25 that feels right, you are literally can be damaging your body so that as you get older, the systems that we have break down. So like, that's like, like I say, you know, you can't fool mother nature. You can't fool, no matter what you do, that extra neutron, if you're taking in too much deuterium, it's destroying your body. It's getting incorporated into your enzymes. So enzymes are long strings of protein that have hydrogen. When more deuterium is replacing hydrogen, those enzymes start to warp because of the extra weight. That deuterium is twice as heavy as hydrogen and it resonates heavy and slow and it starts to warp your DNA and break down your actual DNA. Your DNA is, uh, is uh, uh, cr surrounded by sugar. That sugar starts to get deuterated. So the actual sugar, the hydrogen gets replaced with deuterium and it starts to bend and warp your DNA. That's why this is aging. And so that's why when people are overloading with sugar and high fructose corn syrup, they're literally prematurely aging themselves. So by following this, this may seem good now, but over many years, this lifestyle, it's not sustainable. If you were really great at substituting all kinds of stuff, you could probably stay relatively healthy. But the question is, what makes you think that farming isn't more destructive for this planet than having regenerative, small, organic farms where ruminants and different um, types of crops are moved around. The answer is, well, we had megafauna way up north. There's all kinds of massive animals that, that this planet can support much more meat, much more meat production than it can farming. Farming is so destructive. All you're doing is you're taking away from that soil year after year. How is that ever gonna produce proper, healthy, nutrient-dense food? It isn't, because after a certain number of years, you gotta put on nitrogen fertilizer. That's not natural, that's not healthy. and the real issue with farming is that mother nature doesn't work in isolation. Monocrops and planting one crop is wrong because we need the collaboration of the microbes in the soil, just like your gut microbiome is controlling your health. The soil's microbiome is controlling what grows from it. And when you use glyphosate or do monocrops, you're killing the soil. You're not replacing it. When you have an animal eating green grass, which is what it was designed to eat, it's eating, it's walking around tramping the grass, its waste products are being incorporated into the soil, increasing the carbon. Soil is a huge carbon sink. If everyone was doing regenerative farming, you know, who knows what the greenhouse gases would be, but there is no, the the the, the type of stories where, oh, a cow farts that's causing methane, this is all nonsense. You know, farming is unnatural. 12,000 years ago, we stayed put and became farmers. And we thought that was a good idea. It wasn't. It was a mistake because we didn't know. We didn't have an electron microscope. We didn't know what deuterium was. It's as simple as that. Farming was a big mistake for our health, and it still is. And if you want to be healthy and live a long, healthy life, you have to follow Mother Nature's rules. We evolved from the dirt of this planet under her conditions, under through the energy of the sun, in this connected world where there's fungus and molds and all these different things that are natural. We're supposed to be in that environment. That's what keeps us healthy. This sanitizing your hands and stuff, this is not good. This is not gonna end well. It's not who we are. Dude, <laughs> amazing. Uh, I have to press you on K2. Um, I get all of the sun in the world. I live in Los Angeles. During COVID, I've never been more tan in my life. Uh, I was having a meeting earlier with my wife, by the way, who happens to be my business partner, but you know, in, in my underwear. Um, and that's amazing, but you're freaking me out that there's a balance issue with K2 and I don't know shit about it. Um, I okay. eat the, I, eat primarily meat. So I do have some vegetables, but I'm not hardcore. Um, I do have some fruit, but I'm not hardcore. Um, 80% of my calories probably come from grass fed beef. Um, am I getting K2 somewhere? Uh, are you eating fermented food products? Zero. Okay. That's where you get K2 from. 
All right. Okay. So basically, I'm I'm on death's door. No, and not I all. need to I so, need to do what here. So this goes back to the same thing. So what is osteoporosis? Why is it that when we get older, our bones get brittle? It's because this information is not known. Vitamin K2 is not known. And where this comes down to is doctors are still doing this in my neighborhood. I'm on the west side of Los Angeles. They give elderly women um, calcium and vitamin D thinking, well, vitamin D makes you absorb calcium. So that should do it. It's dangerous. You don't want to take calcium with vitamin D. You get a lot of calcium if you're eating a balanced diet, dairy or uh, green leafy vegetables. But vitamin K2 manages the calcium. So vitamin D brings the calcium into your body. Now it gets into your arteries, into your skin and starts to build up. Why? Because K2 grabs that calcium and puts it into the matrix of bone. So how we evolved, especially like summer and winter, in the summer when the grass is green, you get a lot of K2, the sun is high, you have a lot of vitamin D, and you bring in all this calcium gets put into your bones, so your bone density goes way up. In the winter, the grass is brown, very little K2, because K2 comes from green growing grass, and no sun, no vitamin D, so your body will literally go into your bones and pull that calcium out. I call it your personal bone bank, so why am I not bank. getting K2 from grass-fed beef? So you probably are getting some. Should the I be eating is, kale? I, nope, so nope. fermented so stuff freaks me out. I'd rather avoid yep. it. But if I need to eat it, then so be it. Um, so but is there- su Supplements. So I, I, I have- you know, Supplements make me tense. I try to avoid supplements wherever possible. I, uh, I just have a hypothesis that isolating things does not give you the same thing as the real deal. Have you heard of natto? No, never. Okay. So natto is a Japanese bean curd that's fermented. Did you just it say beans are bad? It, yes. Yes, I did. Um, Does the fermenting good. get rid of the bad part? That's a, that's a great question. So the question is, where do you get your natto from? And is there glyphosate in the natto? natto? But natto is, has tons of K2. It's very popular in Japan as a breakfast food. Um, and so, so vitamin K2, if you get it through natto, is fine. But again, I only supplement what I need to. I know how important vitamin K2 is. So I eat a lot of cheeses, hard cheeses. You can drink raw milk or eat a lot of raw dairy. That has K2. I want to make sure, because I know how profound K2 is. K2 is a cofactor in 17 known enzymes. So without vitamin K2, these enzymes are just sitting there not doing anything. So the things that I want to supplement, I have my bare, bare minimum that I want to supplement. I want to supplement vitamin D in the winter. I want to supplement vitamin K2 every day. And I want to supplement magnesium because magnesium is being taken out of our food chain by glyphosate. glyphosate so how do I get magnesium and K2? If I, so if I were going to supplement, especially yep. those two things, yes. um, is there a um, brand that you recommend, a dosage? Yeah, mine, of course. Uh, Do you, have, you have? That was not a setup. I had no idea. No, um, yeah, I, I, so, I crew, so I started talking about this five years ago with my patients. And at first I thought I was crazy. And then I'd say, are you taking your vitamin D? When you really look into vitamin D and you see that you're not going to find people with an evolutionary level of vitamin D of 40, 50 or higher and cancer, you don't see those things. To me, it became obvious this is really important. But, my, you know, people are like, oh, you know, I drink milk. I'm good. I take a multivitamin. But so I created my own vitamin line and I branded it with my cartoon images to make this understandable and relatable, because this is literally at the core of our health, how we age, how children's jaws grow and develop and this current pandemic. So making these vitamins memorable and giving, you know, giving someone an idea and putting this together easily is what I wanted to do. So I just created a little vitamin line and I was again supposed to be making a candy bar with Quest Nutrition that had vitamin D3, vitamin K2, um, magnesium and MCT oil and resistant starch. So it was basically prebiotic. It was kind of everything you needed because if you want your child to be intermittently fasting, you can't do that. Children are sugar burners because they're eating goldfish crackers and all this, all the sugar stuff. So I wanted to create a product that was a chocolate cookie that was very low in deuterium made with a lot of coconut because coconut is very low in deuterium. That's why coconut oil is so healthy that had everything all in one because it's too hard for people to, oh, it's like, it's too much to remember. They can remember one thing. So that's why I created this product because this is the easiest thing in the world. Eat this chocolate candy. That's, I wanted to simplify this because no one wants a, a chemistry set of vitamins. It's, it's irritating, annoying. I wanted to make this easier. You know, you have to understand that I suffered from a vitamin D3 and K2 deficiency at every stage of my life. This ruined 
my growth. It ruined my health. It ruined my craniofacial development. It ruined my sleep. It ruined everything. And so I don't think anyone is taking this seriously enough. The fact that people aren't actively monitoring their vitamin D level is bizarre. The idea that when you go to your doctor, the first thing they don't say is, hey, let's get a vitamin D level on you. How much are you supplementing? The fact that that's not the conversation is mind blowing. For the last 80 years, this has been the most critical information that anyone could ever do. Why? It regulates aging, it regulates the gut microbiome, and it regulates sleep. That's pretty powerful. So to me, this is the most important thing. People who have different um, chemical issues where their body's out of whack, raising the vitamin D level normalizes the majority of those. Eight, probably 80% of the general public will regain complete health. 20% will need specialized care, you know, looking more into different diets and, and more different supplements. But this is the easiest fix. This is what's bankrupting the Western world. This is what's bankrupting Canada's um, socialized system medicine. This is what's destroying our future here is a lack of understanding that most people's sleep is, are, is destroyed by this one thing. The gut microbiome is destroyed by this one thing and then add in that glyphosate and everyone is getting these modern chronic diseases which are literally nothing other than a vitamin D3, vitamin K2, now magnesium deficiency and it's caused by glyphosate is taking the minerals out of the soil and it's killing the, the, the microbiome. So the, so the, the gut the, the um, gut microbiome and the soil microbiome, they produce these different vitamins that go into the actual vegetables that you're growing. So when you grow something in soil that has a lot of microbes, they are contributing to the health and the nutritional component of any vegetables that you grow. So this, this is such a core understanding. When you, you know, as a dentist, I'm seeing these kids with little tiny airways and retruded jaws and very narrow palates. I discussed something called long face syndrome. This is improper craniofacial growth and development caused by mouth breathing because children can't breathe through their nose. And you know, I have a lot of information online about that, but this one thing is really profound because if children don't sleep properly, they don't grow. If anyone's listening to this and you have a child that grinds their teeth, snores, or is having issues like that, ADD issues, they're not sleeping correctly. And if you don't go into the deep stages of sleep, you don't release growth hormone. So for me, I did not go through puberty till I was 17. Wow. I was stunned. Yeah, I was stunted in growth. You know, when you're 14, you know, you're 14, I was taking prednisone at age 14, but I was choking in my sleep. Prednisone, the primary medication for autoimmune disease, lowers your vitamin D level. It sequesters vitamin D. So we're making the syndrome worse. So there I was, vitamin D deficient, taking this, this medication that was making everything worse, lowering my own vitamin D level. So it's the sleep cycle that's when you repair. It's the sleep cycle that's when you grow. Children grow and sleep. So this one thing, this D3K2, basically omission from all of modern medicine, this is scandalous. This is, this is at the core of almost every modern chronic inflammatory disease. Because when you go to your doctor, here's what happens. You walk in and if you're obese, and you have some health issues, your doctor says, this is your fault. You're a glutton, you don't care about yourself, you need to eat better, you need to exercise more. But if you're thin and you have a health issue, it's genetic. So it's still always your fault. And that's what my issue was. I had a genetic syndrome and it wasn't genetic, it was environmental with a genetic component. Because when you, when you um, basically decrease the overall health of an animal, everyone's gonna break down along the lines of their own genetic predisposition. Eastern European Jews get chronic inflammatory bowel disease. That's part of our genetic breakdown. Could be one or two different different proteins that are not getting made just because, you know, um, I, I you don't have a, a broad range. And this is the funny part too, is that Weston Price is saying, hey guys, this is the environment. These guys are saying, no, keep the bloodlines pure. We know this, that the most different diverse um, connection of uh, mother and father, the more different that you are genetically, the healthier that you are. When you are an inbred population, you have too many of the same genes and chromosomes. Mm -hmm. When you have a completely you know, mixed race marriage, the child has a much greater genetic variability and that will give you greater health. You know, that's why the, you know, these, these small populations have a lot of health issues. Um, you know, East European Jews have a lot of health issues that are related to that small gene pool, which is fascinating. Now, the other thing related to that is we rely on our gut microbiome. They produce um, 90%, their, their DNA outnumbers ours 100, 100 to one. So you have all these great genes that we use, but the gut microbiome's DNA outnumbers ours 100 to one. So what that means is that we're relying on the chemicals that they make much more profoundly than we rely on what we are making from our own actual cells. And that's why the microbiome is the most important thing 
And it's it's crazy because this deuterium and glyphosate, this is killing our microbiome. It's killing the, the bees and the butterflies gut microbiome. That's why the bees are dying out from glyphosate. But it's also killing the soil's microbiome. And this is literally killing the diversity of Mother Nature. This is killing the the, the all the different species on this planet. Oof. And this, this is right, true. So yeah. give, give people in like uh, a quick 30, 60 seconds. I love like, you know, what, what can people do a quick primer on diet supplementation, yeah. sun exposure, if that's part of it, what, what does sure. that ideal life look like? Sure. So I, I like to consider that humans have become disconnected from our natural habitat and the elements of life, air, earth, fire, and water. Okay, so fire is the radiation of the sun. Humans are solar powered animals and we take a charge off the sun. You need to get sunlight on a regular basis without sunglasses because sunlight in your eyes and even around the skin around your eyes tells your brain all kinds of signals. I only wear sunglasses inside a car. Okay, so you want to manage your radiation. I call it radiation rules. I wear blue blockers at night because blue light destroys melatonin. And I will not wear any sunglasses during the day. Okay, so that's fire. Earth is what you and need. No, and no, no sunscreen, I assume. No sunscreen. That's a long discussion, but no, I can't, I can't, I can't advise it. So we'll talk about, there are natural sunscreen that no one's making because you can't patent them and no one's willing to do the research. And I have connection to the scientists who can make these products, taking a vitamin D molecule and irradiating it and putting that on your skin, that protects you. There's something called Lumestrol, which is a natural sunscreen. It's what happens to vitamin D when it gets irradiated turns into lumestrol. So these are products that, you know, I've been trying to get my information out for five years. People, it's hard, it's hard to get out of there. So we go to earth, it's what you eat and how you eat it. Number one, they cannot spray glyphosate on grass. Anything that eats grass is low in glyphosate. Anything that doesn't, isn't coming from a processed food is healthy. So nose to tail, organ meats, and then intermittent fasting, narrow your eating window. Do not eat throughout the day. You're stressing your mitochondria, constantly feeding it to tear. It never gets a chance to heal itself. And then we go to water. Water is easy, but water, the sunlight charges your body. So being in the sun helps keep you healthy in the same way that, that um, plants grow from photosynthesis. And the last is air, breathing and sleep. The whole insomnia sleep apnea syndrome is a lack of oxygen due to the airway collapsing. If you don't get enough oxygen, your brain's going to set an alarm. Hey, wake up. When given the choice between sleep and breathing, your body is going to choose breathing every time. So it's going to destroy your sleep. Yeah. It's going to destroy your sleep. If your sleep is destroyed, you can't heal. So, so those are basically, I, I, I call it like, you know, reconnecting to mother nature. We are hunter gatherers. Our biology is that of a hunter gatherer, but we're living in this modern world. We need to really emulate the behavior of our ancestors and replace those missing elements of life actively. So I say, if you haven't checked your sleep by having a sleep study, you're over the age of 50, you're making a mistake. Having, you know, p- sleep is the most important thing you can do. And it's really not on people's radar. Everyone wants to like, you know, have a comfortable bed. And apparently if you raise your bed, you stop snoring. Snoring is a vitamin D deficiency. And children who snore will stop within two to three days of dosing the right amount of vitamin D that quickly. Yeah, I, I heard you say once that um, this is a neurological problem. And yeah. the way that you alleviate that is with vitamin D. And I thought, whoa, that's amazing. And you, the way you explained all the different ways that we can be vitamin D deficient, um, I had spent a lot of time researching you and I came into this thinking that, you know, it, it's largely a case of sun exposure, but hearing all the ways that we can sort of fuck up our body's ability to take in the, the sun that we're actually being exposed to um, yeah. is, is amazing. Well, that's at the core of epigenetics because genetics is the genes you inherited. Epigenetics is how you activate those genes and what is in control of that, the environment. The environment is the diet that you eat, the radiation you're exposed to, and the activities that you do. It's as simple as that. Humans are sensors for the environment because we evolved here. And our bodies are so highly adaptive that we change on an hourly basis depending on what we put into our systems or the light that we're exposed to. We need to pay much closer attention to what these signals coming into us are. And I kind of will go back to the vegan vegetarian thing. They're taking in information that ultimately is being funded by companies like Monsanto. The vegan movement is highly funded by them because they benefit. That's really the truth. And so this goes back to the idea that when these sensory in, the sensory inputs are coming in, you can't fool your body. So if you're getting this false information on what's healthy, you can really damage yourself. And that information, you know, it used to be that as a, as a hunter gatherer going through the, the forest, If you didn't pay attention to a twig snapping or seeing a shadow move, you could be eaten by a predator. Nothing has changed in the modern world. If you're listening to the wrong sources of information and doing the wrong things, 
you're going to die. It's just going to be a long, slow death from chronic inflammatory disease. And that's really it. This is epigenetics really far advanced. And the hard part for me is this is so simple. There's such simple things that people can do and incorporate into their life that can have a massive effect. Mike drop. Dr. Gould, thank you, man. This, this was awesome. I would love to have you back at some point. There are many, many things that we didn't even begin to touch yeah. on. Um, this was awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully we can help get that message out. And uh, yeah, man, I really, really appreciate it. Guys, it. Uh, where, where can they find you, by the way? So um, as a dentist, I practice Manhattan Beach, it's modern American dentistry. Um, my Instagram is modern underscore hunter underscore gathers. My website, modernhuntergathers.com or my name, Joel Gould. And in this world, you know, it's hard and you know, I try to get followers because people don't necessarily want to, you know, I've tried to approach some podcasts and they go, we don't, you don't have enough followers. And I'm like, I'm a 30 year clinician doctor. I have information you should want to hear. But so anyone wants to follow me, please do. And um, you can get a hold of me through my websites. Awesome, man. Well, guys, trust me, like th this is the tip of the iceberg for him. He has so much rad information. When I was researching, I was like, this is going to be awesome. Uh, you did not disappoint, man. I really enjoyed it. So guys, dive into his world. And if you haven't already, of course, be sure to subscribe here. And until next time, my friends, be legendary. Take care. Thank you guys so much for watching and being a part of this community. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. You're going to get weekly videos on building a growth mindset, cultivating grit, and unlocking your full potential.